Hey there, Shauna Karish here with an Ask Shauna answer and a question. <laughs> this question comes from Mary and she says, I have a very nervous, high strung Pasifino mare. I was told she was abused in the past. What are some think simple things I can do to build her trust in me? She loves food and I think a clicker and treats would go a long way with her. But what should I do? Thanks, Mary. You know what, Mary? You came to the right place. I mean, you, or you're going to the right place. Not me necessarily, but utilizing the positive reinforcement training is going to make a huge, huge difference with your horse. I have seen abused horses that have just turned around. They want to trust and they want to find a safe place, but they they mistrust now. You know, they've, they've lost their faith in what people will do. And oftentimes with the high-strung horses, people tend to correct them more to try to get them to be more you know, obedient or listening. And a lot of times it just rattles them even more. So I'm glad that she's with you. And, and you're going to see her just come out of her shell really pretty quick, I think. And what I would do after you get her kind of out of her shell with you, she will probably discriminate and you may find that she discriminates more against men or women, and that'll probably depend on her past and maybe who she was experienced with. Um, but I would have other people work her too once you get her good. So she kind of starts learning that other people are good too and not just you. Anyway, so what I would do with her, I would start with your basic bridge conditioning, which is building the clicker. We want the clicker to be a yes signal. And even through this simple process that is very short and very brief, you're going to find your relationship changes that fast. So there's a video on here somewhere. Um, it's or on my on my blog, and it is getting your horse off to the right start for clicker training. I think I call it or positive reinforcement training. Look for that because that kind of shows you the bridge conditioning and target training and how to get started there. It'll be easier and faster than me talking about it all here. But basically, you're going to start and get her so the clicker means yes. It tells her yes, what you've just done is correct. And we do it through that Pavlovian or classic conditioning where it's click, feed, click, feed, click, feed. Only thing you want to do is teach her to mind her manners, which if she's high, strung, and nervous, she probably will mind her manners. Um, but at some point, she'll get more comfortable and she still needs to learn it. So go through that process. I would do about eight or nine sessions that are about three to five minutes long, just very brief and good, and reinforce, reinforce, and then it's, uh, you, she'll start to get that the clicker means yes. For a horse who's high, strung, and nervous, the clicker may actually make her nervous at first. The sound of it may startle her. That you'll have to just see. If it does startle her, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put it in a pocket so it kind of muffles the sound a little bit, or I put it um, behind my leg kind of under my butt cheek. <laughs> so I kind of muffle it back there. So it makes the sound a little bit softer. In short order, she'll realize it's okay and you can bring it out and it'll be, you can do it normally. But in the very beginning, if you see her jumping when you're clicking, you can do that and, and make it a little bit softer and that will help reinforce her. And then after you do that for about eight or nine sessions, and you can do it in her stall, you can do it in her paddock, wherever she is. I wouldn't do around other horses within proximity because they'll probably they'll just fight over it <laughs> and then um and then i'd move on to the target training and teaching her to touch a target and i teach her to touch a target um you know touch it first in front of her and she may also especially if she's been abused she may be wary of the target you having something in her hand may make her feel worried i mean i don't know what she's been through and we may never know you, all you'll do is just read on how she is but if you see that she's really worried, I keep the target really kind of low and slow. I bring it up very slowly and then I click as she looks at it even, click and reinforce, as she looks at click and reinforce. And then as that's going good, then you can get a little bit more normal with it. And then I'd move it over, move it over, move it down, move it up. The first time you move it up, move it up slowly because raising it right above her head will probably startle her again. And if she's really wary about it, um, one of the things I do is I'll actually squat down or sit on the ground so that it's really low to the ground and I'm in a low position where she feels that it's safer and I'm not, I'm in a place where she can kind of approach me and let her approach you. Don't go approaching her. Anyway, so check out that video, uh, getting off to a good start for clicker training, something like that for, or for positive reinforcement slash clicker training because really it's positive reinforcement training. Anyway, so go there and I think that will give you the details. Another thing though, let's say after that though, once you get her good about the, um, the clicker and the target, you're going to find a lot of trust comes up and a lot of um, comfort will increase with her. I would teach her, um, I think a really good thing to do is teach her to stand so you can kind of walk all around her and touch her body and you can touch her everywhere. Start where she's most comfortable, you know, so she can kind of acclimate nice and slowly. Make it teeny itty bitty steps 
So it just goes ever so briefly. I think teaching her to pick up her legs would be good. Teaching her to lead and follow with you using the target would be good. Um, I think that teaching her stationary target would be a good thing. And then anything else you want to do or wherever you want to go with her. And also a, a one a caveat here I want to put in is all throughout this process, I like this for every single horse, but particularly with a high strung nervous horse, I want to build relaxation into all the criteria. Okay, so at first as you go in, you're teaching and turn her head away, it may be a little wound up. And at first you're gonna say it's okay, because we only wanna pick one criteria at a time to deal with. But the times you see her kind of relax a little bit, and in relaxation, I'm looking for soft eyes, soft jaw, soft lips, soft ears, um, softer lower neck and head carriage, um, tense uh, muscles soft. Look for all those little things to get softer. So right off the bat, you may not just get totally relaxed, but if you see her and she's over here, but you see her eyes just soften a little bit and get a little softer and not quite so worried looking, click and reinforce those little steps towards relaxation. So it's kind of an underlying theme you wanna go, you know, an underlying criteria, so all the training is a part of that. So as you move through the training, always look to kind of get things more and more and more relaxed. And this will help her to relax around you. Realize when you come up to do the training, relaxation is part of the criteria. So as you bring her to something new, she can get relaxed. Down the road, I also probably work some despooking exercises, but give her a little time to get adjusted and, and, and go really, really slow with that. All of it goes slow. Never go above threshold with her. Move nice and slow where she can get her comfort level. And as she gets up, then, and, and, and I, I, wrote, I did a little thing that has threshold in it, but threshold is when she gets to the point, let's say she's doing something, you see her go, that to me says she's worried about something. She saw something that worries her. So that's threshold. And I want to work below that and just slowly move above and it'll stretch up and up and up and up and up, but move with it nice and slow. If we go too far too fast, we're going to, she's going to go back to that nervous frightened mare. So need to go nice and slow and let her acclimate to things in her own time. She will set the pace for the training. You just go with her and it'll all be groovy. <laughs> anyway, so I hope that helps you out, Mary. If you have more questions as you go along, because you got a long road ahead of you, and I'm sure you'll have some questions, please don't hesitate to get a hold of me here at AskShauna.com, you or anybody else. And until next time, enjoy getting your horse on target. Bye.